If you're thinking of getting solar panels, then you might have the big question of, I haven't got a perfect roof, my roof doesn't face south, is it worth getting solar panels? Well, about 18 months ago, I had 10 solar panels put on my east roof by Heatable. And six months ago, we installed some further panels on my north roof, south roof, and my west roof. So I now have every single direction, every aspect covered north south east and west so if you're wondering whether to get solar panels on your north roof your east roof this video is going to show you the individual breakdown of those panels and how they've performed now the reason we can give this individual data is we have what's known as microinverters on every single panel so every panel is its own power station and because of this we can average out the data across the whole panels and give you an exact amount of what each single panel generated over each aspect of each roof. So if you're wondering which aspect to put your panels on and whether it's worth putting any panels on your north roof, whether it's putting worth putting just one single panel on your south roof, this video is gonna answer that question. First up, little disclaimer, Heatable are a channel partner of mine. I am contracted to make several videos for them over the next course of the year, but I can freely, openly say whatever I want. There is no restrictions of what I say about them in the contract. There's no restrictions about what I say about the content. I can be completely honest. If it doesn't work or they make a mistake, I can just be honest. In fact, anyone going to evnick.com forward slash heatable can get a £150 off a solar install. They've done jobs for family, friends, neighbors. They're doing a job for one of my good friends very shortly on a battery only install. I choose to recommend them because I honestly believe that out of most of the solar companies out there, most of the national solar companies out there I've dealt with, Heatable do a fantastic quality job and they truly care about customer service and they have a really competitive price. Now before I go any further in the video and get to the data, I want you to go down below in the comments, don't cheat, and guess the order of the orientation of aspect you think did the best. I'll give you a hint, it starts off with south. Now if you're wanting to see more data, because this data is just going to run from July to December, and we took an average of each array. So with the east, we took the average of what all those 10 panels were out of the average, same with the west, and the north just got one and the south just got one, so we've just took the data from those one panel. So we've got less, less data from the north and the south, but the five array and the 10 array, we've got a nice little average across them. What I also want you to do is have a guess on what you think the North Ray did compared to the South Ray, because it might give you a little bit of a surprise. Now, if you're wanting to understand why I put bifacial panels on my roof, then make sure you click subscribe and that notification bell, because we will explain why if you're putting any panels on your roof, it's very important that you get the maximum amount of solar from them, and bifacial panels, I'll give you a clue, have two sides of solar, which is why we put them on my roof. So a quick recap, I've got 10 panels on the east, five on the west, one on the north, and one on the south. So we're gonna take the average, um, and this is what we got. So total generation over that six month period was 2,336 kilowatt hours of electricity. The south generated an average of 172 kilowatt hours, followed by west at 153 kilowatt hours, with east slowly behind it at 131.11 kilowatt hours. And what about north? Well, everyone tells you not to get any panels on the north array. I've even done videos myself saying it's probably a waste of time in the northern hemisphere fitting any north panels. Well, the north panel generated 88.10 kilowatt hours over this month. So we need to work this data backwards. North array, 88 kilowatt hours over the course of July to December, and that's in the winter months when the sun is lower and not hitting that north panel in full. But we need to compare that what this north array is like to say the west array, which is typically the most common places you put sun, it's east, south, uh, and then west. That's where people put panels, everyone says don't put them on north. So how did this north panel compare to my west array? Well, in November, north array generated 3.37 kilowatt hours. And in December, that north array generated 2.27. Now in December, the west panel generated 3.04. And in November, a west panel generated 4.46. So north did pretty well. And when you even look at the data over July to December, if I had 10 panels rather than one single north panel, it would have generated 881 kilowatt hours as a 10 panel north array. So if you have only got a north 
facing roof and you're wondering whether it's worth putting any panels on it, I personally do think it's worth it. We also saw some really odd seasonal data. In fact, some seasonal data that you wouldn't actually strike you as obvious until you saw the data in my sheet. So one of the things that we saw is that the South Array was on par sometimes with the West Array. In fact, the August data showed that the West Array generated an average of 41.7 kilowatt hours per panel, while the South generated an average of 42.5 kilowatt hours per panel. So again, proving that if you can only put panels on your West Array, in for, you know, for some of the year, it will generate almost as much as the South. But hey, look, the real winner here is in the winter months, the solar generation, as you can expect, is lower. And it's gonna be lower going forward to January, February, until we get into the warm months. I am pretty much relying on my Alpha 10 kilowatt hour battery. Now in the past, when I talked about batteries, I said that if you're getting a solar system, it is a must that you get a battery system. And I completely still stand by that. Now I've got a Cozy 6 heat pump, which means that my batteries pretty much completely depleted every single day very early on because the heat pump is being powered by the battery and the limited amounts of solar I'm still generating. Now in the past I said you need at least 10 kilowatt hours of storage. I'm going to revise that because if you're getting a heat pump you're probably going to need a bigger battery, probably at least 15 kilowatt hours or even up to 25 kilowatt hours and if you've got a larger home than mine or a higher heat loss than mine you're going to have a bigger heat pump you might even need 35 or 40 kilowatt hours of storage if you want to cover pretty much all your winter use now you don't want to oversize your battery too much because in the summer you'll be generating more solar and you'll be wasting that battery but as a happy medium i think most people with a heat pump are going to need between 15 and 25 kilowatt hours of storage if they want to run more off peak if you're not thinking of getting solar and you just want battery only heatable do battery only go to evnick.com forward slash heatable forward slash battery use code evnick75 and you get 75 pound off the total quote and if you want to learn more about batteries and what batteries heatable sell check out this video here if you want to learn more about the cozy six heat pump that i've got check out this video here